Hey everybody, this is my very personal review of the Retro HM01 engine model. Here you can see myself on the left, obviously, with a great family friend who is um, getting on in years but has a very good engineering background. And he found the building of the model with me really therapeutic and it, um, it was challenging for both of us, but it went together very, very well. The instructions are completely clear. My one tip if you get this model is do not guess, do not skip ahead. Every step in the instruction book needs to be carried out in the order of the book. We made that mistake, you know, attempting to put flywheels on before they needed to go on. And then you go, oh, hang on a minute, there's a bit behind the flywheel. <laughs> so, you know, we scratched our heads a few times, but it did go together well. The castings and the parts are all there. <laughs> Very well made, fit together without any fettling. Um, there are some spare parts. And, um, you know, we came across one or two little building difficulties but it was good it was a very good exercise for both my friend um, and myself i certainly enjoyed working with him um, he appreciated um, building the model and as i said it was it was challenging but it worked um, oh yeah here's you can probably see we're having a bit of trouble uh, in the instructions it says with the governor is to put the governor on but the governor arms um, don't open wide enough to actually fit on the pulley so in the end we took the governor off and then refitted it it comes fully fitted so we had to take it apart and put it back on that i have learned is not the way to do it all you have to do is slide the pulley off uh, to the end of the shaft uh, put on the arms of the ball governor and then slide the pulley ball governor and pulley onto the shaft and I, I've, I've since done that many times because that's the next thing that I'm going to talk about this retro HM01 engine um, it was pretty easy to put together I think it took us uh, an afternoon and a morning to complete it but after it was completed it really didn't run <laughs> it's not a model that you can put some fuel in press start and there it goes purring like a kitten on your worktop uh, no <laughs> the first problem I had with it when it was completed was we just didn't get spark I was very kindly sent the ignition kit and the fuel tank and the base, so thank you. And we hooked it up and there was absolutely no spark. I messed with the ignition kit and spoke to um, the supplier and no, we couldn't figure it out. I looked closely and discovered that the contact breaker points weren't actually touching. The way that spark is initiated in all engines with contact breaker points is it's the moment that the contact breakers break unleashes a cascade of electricity into your spark plug and across the spark plug gap you get a spark and of course at the right time but we'll go on to that problem next so by refitting the contact breaker points making sure I only made the spark when the timing cam opened up was absolutely critical so i got a spark and spent lots and lots of time putting fuel and pulling the little string which is quite annoying i mean for every time you start it you probably need to wind it up and pull the starting string uh five to ten times this engine is not just build and run you really have to enjoy tinkering with carburetor settings and timing and it teaches you about the four stroke cycle you can see where the exhaust stroke is you can see where the compression stroke is you can see and adjust where the spark plug fires you know if it's before or after top dead center and things like that and you have to be prepared with this model and it lets you do it which is great 
to actually mess with it. And you will learn a lot. We really enjoyed building it. And um, since I've been running it by myself after my friend left, it was, um, you know, it's been really a learning experience. So, yeah, you will enjoy it, but be prepared to tinker. The carburetor itself is incredibly fiddly. You have two uh, knobs, basically you have the air knob. Uh, when it's fully closed, it's choked, but there is still a small air gap through a central port in the carburetor air supply, which will let it fire even although the air is choked. Try that to start. The needle valve that lets in the fuel, do not turn it more than a quarter turn. So fully closed, quarter turn that is your full adjustment anything past the quarter turn you'll just flood the engine and you'll have to take the spark plug out and um, clear it out and, and start again so just the first quarter of a turn the best starting procedure that i found was to crack the needle valve for the fuel by about a quarter turn the air supply to fully choked and pull it through with a nice clean brushed spark plug because it fouls very easily it tends to run rich and you get a carbon buildup on the spark plug and it's tiny so every time it doesn't run take the spark plug out clean it with a wire brush put it in and that will really help you starting it in the future but then i discovered another problem the model comes with very accurately punched timing marks and you have to align one little punch dot between two cogs with two little punch dots and that supposedly is the ideal timing for the spark but they're wrong i mean they're way wrong when we built it to the engine spec and i pull it over and i check the spark the timing set on the model is somewhere during the compression stroke. It really needs to be just before top dead center. So you need to take that apart, which is fiddly, and adjust the timing so it fires the spark plug just before top dead center. And then you're in with the chance at running. Uh, so then over to you good luck with the carburetor fiddle with the settings and eventually you will get it running so here i'm going to close with some beautiful shots and sound of this very good model but a model for engineers who like tinkering actually running take it away hm01 it's fun and you'll learn a lot by building it <laughs> 